Somewhere in the jungles of Central Africa, there is a band of ruthless killers on the move. They're known as the Lord's Resistance Army, and their brutal leader, Joseph Kony, has evaded capture for more than 20 years. I'm traveling with the Ugandan army en route to join a patrol, hunting Joseph Kony. Kony's Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, has been fighting to turn Uganda into a theocratic state, and in the process, they've killed almost 3,000 villagers in this region in just the last two years. <laughs> Helen Lanyon cares for her grandchildren in a small village near the town of Gulu. Her only son was a government soldier, and one day the LRA came looking for him. <laughs> Her maiming was carried out by child soldiers. This is Kony's native land, where he first built the LRA by kidnapping children from the region of Gulu and giving them guns. At the height of the conflict, this hospital courtyard was the only safe place in Gulu. 10,000 children slept here every night for years. Because rebels would come at night, surround the whole village and take the children of a certain age that they would need to fill in their rank, to recruit them by, by force or to abduct them. I leave Uganda and after a long, hard drive, I finally reach the shared border of southern Sudan and the Central African Republic. This region is now the staging ground for the hunt for Kony's LRA. Getting this far is a rare opportunity. I'm the first journalist to be allowed to follow this Ugandan army unit on their difficult mission. There's a lot of forests, a lot of rivers, and uh, it is really challenging terrain. You're getting, you find that at times, so you have to cut their way through, through a forest. It's, it's not easy. The operations map shows the LRA's recent attacks and the suspected path of Kony's men. With it, Colonel Awelu attempts to make sense out of a thousand square kilometer game of hide and seek. For 22 years, he has been in the bush, so he has some experience on how to, to elude forces, how to uh, d disperse, disappear, hide. He, he knows all these, all these tactics, and uh, it, it's not easy to get him. When you get him, then he, 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 you're very lucky. The helicopter ready, I set off for the front line to join the hunt. The forest below is the most uninterrupted stretch of bush that I have ever seen, vaster than even the rainforests of Borneo or the Amazon. There is not a human path, cooking fire or hut for hundreds of kilometers. The helicopter could be heard for great distances in the quiet of the bush, which is one reason why the LRA must be tracked on foot. You 
endanger the forces more when you put them to follow the, the same track of the enemy. The commander in charge, Major Patrick, explains to me how we will be moving. What you should do to avoid being trapped by the enemy, maybe when you are near, you're near him, you can set ambush. So the best you can do is to cross crease like this. But doesn't that mean that you have to move twice as fast as them? Exactly, exactly. Along with the men, I meet this gaunt but feisty dog. He's followed this unit all the way from the Congo, over a thousand kilometers. Uh, the trackers quickly pick up Kony's trail. Everybody passes through the same grass, tends to turn it, and when it is hit by sun, it begins drying. How many people pass this way? Here it is about 80. 80 is the number of just this one unit of the Lord's Resistance Army. At its peak, the LRA may have reached 3,000, but currently it's weak. The soldiers tracking them march in silence from dawn till dusk, rarely drinking any water, resting a few minutes every two hours, for months or even years. Squad leader Captain Mohammed hasn't left the bush or seen his family for the last 18 months. Captain, Joseph after a few hours hard march, the trackers notice a spot where Coney's rear flank waited in ambush before moving on. This shows that they were resting here as the rear protection, the rear protection was actually setting an ambush for any eventuality from behind in case forces are tracking them. And this is so, this food on the ground is an indication. And there is, this is an indication. You know, even germination, Gina begin germinating after two days. And this is an indicator that these people passed here, most likely after two days. There are also signs that children are still with Coney on the march. We continue tracking until we come upon the camp where Coney slept two nights ago. When you see them preparing a dish like a, this chicken, that means they have a commander. This is for commander and the commander slept around here. After only a few moments rest, we head off again. I begin to have some understanding how grueling this life must be, both for the soldiers and the men they're tracking. Over the years, some members of Kony's army have defected from his cause and some of the abducted child soldiers, like this man, Amoni Joseph, have managed to escape. Amoni now lives at a rehabilitation center for ex-LRA soldiers. Well, yeah, this is my room. I sleep when, well, yeah. When the mattress, the zelatan, even all, even the small bug. A caraman dong adjoining Johnny. Gan tete wakata mirror will bet carriage and cut again ticker. So carmo oit quatagi. One nan of Gilwen began ticker. She don't go chap pony walk a politic, my maggie. Walk one of Bertial Luen Matal again. We were Sasan in Mojawao, now we were in the Unifamiliaco. You mean me, Mekawoko? Nimana, if you. 
Patrick McCassie is also a returnee, a former child soldier who has now joined the Ugandan army to assist the tracking effort and share his unique insights. Kizuri yake ni katikati ya sisi, kama sisi hiko. Nama na kutafuta hiyo akili ingine na, na, na yongeza. Kwa mana sisi tumekua huko pamoja na hao, tunajua akili ya hao yote. Nama na hao nataka kupanya na sisi pili tunajua. Maaskari wako wengi wamefanya na kazi na watu, watu wala likuwa elarewa karudi. Waweke wengine kwa timi yako. Uta, uta waamini? Mimi, mina fry kufry. Yani vile na wako vina damu enzi yangu, mbao alikamata na nguvu. Sio kusema nti hawa alijependelea kuenda kwa kichaka. Kony's ability to constantly stay one step ahead has combined with his own peculiar Christian mysticism to fuel a widespread belief that Kony possesses magical powers. The soldiers tell me that Kony is able to hear conversations 500 kilometers away that he can make his men invulnerable to bullets by smearing oil on a soldier's chest and can even control nature itself. It doesn't take long to get some idea how the rumors of these powers get started. So this is hard for even me to believe, but after being told a number of times that Joseph Kony can control swarms of bees, the entire camp, as soon as we made camp, was set upon by an incalculable amount of, of bees. So I don't know if they're Coney's bees or not, but no matter whose they are, they're deeply unpleasant. But not all the soldiers are under Coney's spell. Joseph Coney is a good one. His good one is that he is a good one. He is a good one. Mbakuwa mara mingi sana, mbao tanapata contacts za grupu semu ye mbao yiko ndani yake, lakini ye ndia na kuanga munti ya kwanza kukimbia. Tracking Kony gets even harder in the pouring rain. Footprints get washed away and visibility decreases. The soldiers are on edge, and when night falls, the threat of an ambush rose. We hear another tracking unit has rescued two young girls, abandoned by the LRA when they could no longer keep up the march. I think back to a woman I met in Gulu, and I'm afraid for what these two young girls may have suffered. <laughs> Margaret was one of Joseph Coney's wives, a euphemism for the young women abducted and forced into sexual slavery. Since escaping, she spends her days knitting to earn a living, but for almost half her life she was constantly on the move or in battle. Even Coney's wives were expected to fight. One car, I don't want to use you down. Get training, one car in a now, one is here a double wine. And to anti a mage and commander Mogani's here a wine. I knew to a laching. When Margaret wasn't at the front line, she was held in a camp of up to 50 concubines. They cooked for the soldiers and cared for the many children fathered by Coney, surviving as best they could. Med doggy and. Udo can own near and down my comb and no poyo. 
Kono no di ngea wa koma ikini wa nyu do ma no go a fool. Em be am ger pa ma ro. Ten do ka che li. Do be ru go le ten kiri do wa ni ngo wa ma wi nyu la ka. Dong me gi eno la mo nyu no wa jo pi pa ri. Ka do wa jo gi mo ni ini ko er ti gi to er mi ne ka che mo e ka ti tak do wa jo gi mo e ka na ti da wi nyu. Another dawn, another early start. Kony seems to know that we're gaining on him and has gone to great lengths to confuse the trail in the night. The LRA is now weaving unpredictably, crossing the same river back and forth three times and splintering into smaller groups to throw us off the track. Have you lost the track? No, no, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't. Because as they were crossing the river, they scattered. But uh, I heard they have communicated that they have now got it united all together. So we keep tracking? We keep tracking. That same day, we come across the clearest signs yet that Kony himself is up ahead. We find the tattered clothes of one of his abducted girls and a notebook. So this is a speech by Kony to yeah, his this people. This is a speech by Kony, and one of the, those who attended the speech uh, managed to uh, copy it or write it down. And uh, in the document, he's trying to encourage his fighters uh, to be courageous that uh, period for them dying in, in the battle has already ended. This notebook is a glimpse into Kony's mind, and it has a visible impact on the trackers. They feel closer than ever, and they want to keep moving. But I've seen enough now to understand how this cat and mouse game continues. Kony's real magic being the ability to keep his men believing that they will win a war without clear battle lines or objectives. And the Ugandan soldiers needing to believe that Kony is just over the horizon and that they will soon be home. The men who rescued the two girls have moved through the night to join our force. Mary and Teresa Abba were abducted by Kony's men when their village was attacked a week ago. They were sexually assaulted and then forced to begin their long march. The girls have had a lucky escape. The soldiers are keen to make sure that Kony isn't as lucky. Good luck, Captain. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. See you. This is my last view of the soldiers before they take up the trail again. As we take off, the last of my confusion about why Kony has not been captured disappears. The jungle seems even more vast than when I first flew over it, and I can see now how Kony can disappear under any tree, into any river, under any rock, leaving his men and the jungle to cover his escape while he lives to fight another day.